a great show lined up today. I have a returning guest. He was here in January. This is Will from Michigan. And, and if you want to check out his first appearance, where he talks a lot about his experiences with uh, several different phenomena, that would be Season 5, Episode 32, and it was titled, We Could Hear the Footsteps. Will's coming back today, not only as an experiencer with a, a few more experiences to share with us, but... He is also a seasoned researcher into the paranormal phenomena with over 30 years of experience, and he wants to talk about his ideas about just what's going on with all this paranormal stuff. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Paranormal Portal Podcast. I'm your host, Brent Thomas. Thank you all for joining us, and special thank you goes out to all of you who continue to support the podcast and continue to spread the word. Always remember, if any of you out there have experiences of your own that you'd like to share, feel free to email me at paranormalportalradio at gmail.com. Again, paranormalportalradio at gmail.com, and you too could be a guest on the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me back. Uh, like last time I was on, I was sharing my experiences, and I realized I mentioned in passing what other quickly I had a theory. Uh, I was going to mention some of it last time, and I realized I didn't, and that's why I wanted to come back to share with everyone what I think is actually possibly an idea of what might be actually going on out. Yeah, that's the interesting part of the paranormal is that it's you know we're dealing with the unknown, and uh, you know I mean. Literally, we know almost nothing about this stuff other than people are seeing and experiencing things they can't explain. And it seems like a fundamental breakdown of the mechanics of reality as we know it. So what do you what what do you what are your ideas, Will? Or where do you want to begin with this? Well, first, like you always say on your show, nobody is an expert. Nobody can honestly say they're an expert at the paranormal because it's not the normal, as we have in our everyday life. Uh, um, but what I do believe, I'll use the analogy I was sharing with you earlier, is I believe everybody has pieces of the puzzle. We all have our own personal experiences as well as beliefs, but I, I believe if we all were to start coming together and just sharing those pieces of the puzzle, we could slowly start getting a bigger picture of what's actually going on. Um, In my 30 years of studying this, both the paranormal as well as, uh, I'll just put it this way, for 30 years I've studied not just the religious side of it, but the paranormal side of it as well. I've just been always fascinated with the mystery side of things, of solving the mystery side of things. Uh, I started out when I was young with, of course, like, Things like the Bermuda Triangle and, you know, just the strange mysteries of the world, Loch Ness Monster, cryptids, everything. And uh, as well as the same side of being in, growing up on the religious side of it, I grew up a, a strict Baptist growing up. And But I, as I got older, my mind opened up to the other sides of all the other religions. And I, I believe a little different than I did growing up now. And it's it's gotten me to where I am today, to where... A lot of this stuff's making more sense to me now than it did back then. Um, in in my studying, in my head, what I had, I guess I had done is I take all these little things I figure out and I start like a detective with the, the, the red strings, just putting a pin here to this one. It connects to this one here, which connects to this one here, there. And I, I don't think I have all the answers, but I think think I'm starting to see some connections. And that's some of the theories I want to share with you and any of your listeners and even some of the people that have been in it for quite a long time that listen to you or that you know are some of the people that have been in, like, some of the people that you know may know some things or may want to share with it as well as we can come together and put these puzzle pieces together and start getting answers. That's my 
thought is to try and stir up some other people's ideas by adding what I know or what I've figured, what I think I've figured out over the last 30 years. Yeah, that's really powerful. And I, and I think, you know, of course, no one person is going to solve these enigma, but by, by this group think process, I think you're right. I mean, there's breadcrumbs everywhere with it. You know, like we are, people are seeing that, that breakdown in our understanding of, uh, you know, standard physics. And and yet it's happening, and people are are left in, in many cases really shell shocked by it because something just occurred that isn't supposed to be. So I yeah. I like the idea of of putting it out there as a group think project, you know, where we, we people can contribute their pieces or their viewpoints, and uh, maybe in the in the mix we'll find what might be at least a a solid fundamental theory of what what that what is going on. Okay. I, they, I, I think the first point I, I, I really want to make is uh, not to get hung up a lot of times on specific terminology sometimes. Because, uh, for example, terms like spirit and ghost get interchangeably used in the paranormal field. Um, a lot of times, you know, when you get down to it, some by people, I, I mean, for example, how many terms do we have for Sasquatch out there? Uh, depending on you know the location you're at or how how you were brought up to learn the term, I mean, for example, back in medieval times, they would have used terms like troll and ogre for a similar type being, and but it, they were all describing a similar creature for all these hundreds of years <laughs> through time. So, which will come up again later. Uh, so my first theory on this is the dimensional theory is so many people are out there thinking about these uh, multiple dimensions and different dimensions. And if you think logically about this for a minute, um, we obviously don't know how many dimensions there are, but let's step back and talk about the ones we do know. So let's think mathematically for a minute. We know the first dimension, obviously a one dimensional object is that single pinpoint of space time that's just there just that one point of something that's out there and then you go to a two-dimensional object which is a plane of in in mathematics is just the you know the a b you know you only have the two side you know it's a flat object of a two-dimensional now what i've discovered about dimensions in the terms of that mathematically when you get to the three dimensional, you have the you know the three, you know x y z, length width height. When you get into three dimensional objects, it's basically multiple layers of two dimensions crammed together, just like a one dimension or a two dimensional is multiple layers of the one dimension. The okay, if you're following me mathematically, do I have you so far? <laughs> you got me so far. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. So here, here's my thoughts on the dimensional spiritual part of this. Um, if you take a third dimensional object, and if you want to look at it fourth dimensionally, you would have to cram a bunch of three dimensional objects together at multiple points in time. So a fourth dimension is people, some people try to say the fourth dimension is time, but I think it's a little more than that. I think it has to do with space time. And I've always described it as time isn't really like a line like people show as a timeline or a tree of different possibilities. I think as each second passes, imagine it as a layering. It's layered down and pushed down into history, and it becomes almost like a solid object itself. History is pushed down into itself, and it's solidified in time. So to me, a fourth dimensional, the fourth dimension would be a space-time type situation. Now, I'm going to go to a fifth dimension, I believe, is where the spiritual stuff comes into of we are, and this physical thing that we are in is not us. We are an energy being. I, I mean, our personality, our emotions, our memories, that's all, an, in, that's all energy. I believe that fifth dimension is an energy dimension. Now, the reason I mention these different layers of the dimension is because the... A higher dimension can influence the lower dimension. Like a three dimension can have influence on a two dimension object. 
But the lower dimension, like the two dimension object, can't really influence the third dimension. Now, you've mentioned before about having issues with children's spirits. Uh, how could a loving God or creator be now allow these spirits to still be here? Now, if my theory about this part is correct, the spirit lives within a fifth dimension, which could come back to a third dimension point in time just to hang out, just to visit, even if it is a child spirit. Therefore, no, the spirit wasn't really left behind or left anywhere. That spirit's just visiting a spot they wanted to just hang out and be at that point in space time of the fourth or third dimension, since it is a fifth dimension being. It can do such a thing. And oh, sometimes those things that we see in our third dimension that we're physically in, those spirits that some people see are a spiritual past loved one or somebody possibly coming to visit in that dimension to say a final goodbye or just to hang out or something. And I know there's been plenty of people that have been on the show that have mentioned seeing, hearing, and I believe, in a dimensional sense, that's a possible explanation of how another dimension can influence our third dimension in that sense. But that's my theory on the spiritual sense of it. Interesting. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's powerful. Um, do you mind if I ask, where, where does frequency come into this, uh, in, your, in your opinion? Frequency, I, again... Because um, the wavelengths of light that we see um, and energy, frequency is such a strange, and then to me, I think frequency is so manipulative. You can manipulate frequency for like radios, for our phone. I mean, each, literally each phone is on such a different frequency that, you know, you're not picking up everybody's phone call that's out there. And the frequency system is so manipulated that once you, be, since we're like a three-dimensional being, those energies that are on that fifth dimension, like people will see orbs of light in our three dimension. And that frequency, if they want us to see them, they can, because their energy, they can kind of adjust their frequency so we can see them. But at the same time, if you get into, let's say, psychics who have the ability themselves to adjust their own frequency, I think there are some people who have just that ability within their own energy to adjust their frequency so they themselves can see these things. Good point. Okay. I, I don't know if it's something in their bloodline. I don't know if it's something that's honestly just a God-given gift, if that be, or if it's something you can train. But again, at the same time, because we are energy, like you say yourself, we all have the potential for that. Uh, I, I believe if you train it properly, you could easily do that. Anybody could easily do that. It's just a matter of figuring out how to do it. Right. Or finding someone who knows how to do it. <laughs> um, but then that brings me to my other theory. Now, this is the one that's going to probably be a little bit stranger to uh, understand. Um, now, you know, I was talking about the fourth dimension of space time being a solid object. Right. Now, you take a solid object and you bend that solid object. Like if you take a ruler or something, start to bend that. What happens to that solid object? You start to get cracks and breaks in the surface of that object. All scientists have agreed that to do any kind of time travel, quote unquote, you would have to bend space time to do so. And there have many been many attempts out there in the scientific world to see if they could do this. And I believe just by trying to do such a thing, I honestly believe at some point, either in the past, in the present, or even in the future, somebody may have been successful at not time travel itself, but possibly just doing that little bit of bend in space-time to cause those cracks along the entirety of space-time. Now, how would those cracks along time itself show? Well, they would show up like, I don't know, people seeing events from the past in front of them that 
is not currently happening, either a repetitive sort of thing. Residual. Residual, or even in a intelligent sort of way where they can interact with them. Uh, people would be going around having time slips where they feel like they're suddenly in a different place or, t- or time from where they currently are. Uh, you would see things possibly futuristic flying devices in the sky that aren't shouldn't be there in our time. Okay. You kind of getting that what I'm saying here with some of the things that are being portrayed. Um and if it's possible that somebody did do such a thing, these would be how it would be these would be how we would be seeing these crimes. It would be Little things in our time that would pop up, you know, strange disappearances of people who show up so many years later, like nothing's different, same age, they haven't aged nothing, stories like that have been around. Um, creatures that should be extinct, being seen in the jungles of Africa, certain dinosaurs that they have actually gotten the pictures of, mm. suddenly seen, but then they can't find it again. Certain creatures like the what is believed to be possibly the Gigantopithecus being seen for all these hundreds of years, even to today, which they believe possibly is what Sasquatch is, as a carryover of the Gigantopithecus. And they believe this creature is extremely smart. Now, what if, like people say, because the way this creature can see, this creature can see these crap and can move through them. And suddenly be there one minute and gone the next, like so many stories talk about about Bigfoot. Now, if, now again, like I was talking about earlier, if you take all these puzzle pieces, uh, and these are the conclusions I've come to of the spiritual side of it, of the different dimensions, versus the if mankind did succeed at bending space time and the cracks are forming are being shown in the form of the residual intelligent people disappearing, the things being seen of possibly futuristic flying devices in the sky. It, this could be an answer as to why Sasquatch can be seen one second, second disappear the next. It, 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 to me, it looks almost as this could be a fit. And this is why I wanted to bring my theories to your show in hopes that some of the other experts in these fields that you have had or have, are listening so they could contact me and share some ideas and we could possibly grow this idea into something more. Sure. And come together as a group to solve some of these possible things for the paranormal so people can, so even the scientific field may even have a way to do scientific studies and possibly have scientific ways to actually solve some of these now, I, I do have a question uh, just as far as the the uh, theorized mechanics of what you're saying. So if if you were to attempt to bend space time and and as you suggest perhaps somebody has been at least partially successful in doing that whether a future state or or whatever and I would imagine that would be some future state of of us uh has, has managed to do that causing these fractures and stuff but in order how do you bend the space time but only end up fracturing one thing which is the, the basically the continuum of it or and and because when you brought up the ruler example um you bend the ruler but you're not really affecting what it the environment around the ruler so how do how does torquing i i mean how can you you understand what i mean it, it, there's like no point this of, is I, I want to get the idea out there of if this is what caused these little fractures, mm-hmm. caused these little things to just pop up along the timeline here and there. Is this a possible idea? That's why I said I'm no expert, but sure. these are where my little, you know, pinpoints of all these little red lines are you know, drawing to the possibility of what if this is 
yeah. a possible way that's caught. Because to me, when I put all the different stories together, it almost it's it to my in my mind it almost makes a lot of the paranormal fit. If this is, then this fits. If this is, then this. In my mind, so right. that's why I want to yeah. bring this thought of possibility idea out there to sure. the paranormal public out there for everybody to just an idea that you want and think about. Is this a possible? Yeah, no, I, I, I get what you're saying. And, and I, I appreciate the spirit of you coming forward with these because it does take courage to put these ideas out there. And, and, for and, I, and I know it, some of it sounds completely like, wow, that guy's insane. But no, like no. you said, you love weird people as strange people on your show. That you're, yeah, you're right at home here on the portal. <laughs> Believe me. Um, but I would say that, you know, I've always, and, and I don't pretend to know either. I'm just an idiot with a microphone most of the time. But what, what I consider is that rather than, than something torquing, you know, some, uh, some future version or whatever torquing the space time, I always thought that perhaps it's all much more dynamic. We often, and I've said this many times, that, that we, we consider reality as this rigid box. It's got rigid rules, and then and, and these are the laws. And, it, and it's concrete and unyielding. But obviously, by demonstration of these incredible events that we hear about people experiencing through the course of the shows and many other shows out there, it, it does seem to demonstrate that it's, it's perhaps much more dynamic. And maybe these, these diaphragms or, or whatever of, of you know, space-time merging and demerging and, and perhaps uh, dimensional shifts and, you know, pockets of, you know, uh, interference with each other, maybe they create these these pathways that happen and have always possibly happened. And right. it's just we're not adept enough to be able to either observe it directly or measure it or even predict it, but that perhaps so, at some future point we'll be able to understand that reality actually, you know, has a has a biorhythm to it, for lack of a better term, like a respiration. And, and sometimes these these dimensions or multiversal possibilities merge mm -hmm. with each other and then expand and contract. Maybe there's something like that, like an, a, a rhythm out there. What do you think of that thought? And I, yeah, I, I agree. That's a, a good point too. And again, that goes back to the uh, spiritual multidimension side of it. Uh, I only went up to the fifth. Who knows what's above and beyond that? Because all, uh, multiple religions speak of them being Seven level, seven levels to heaven and seven levels to heaven. That's 14 different dimensions right there, you know, yeah, and it's sure. spiritual beliefs. And so, yeah, the multiple, the multiple dimension part, uh, that was just me breaking it down to a small portion of it. Yeah. And showing how the, the, um, how we as energy beings can still visit a third dimension while still being in the fifth dimension. No, I think that's beautiful too. I, I like, I like what you talked about with, uh, people being able to adjust their frequency because I, I think that's a great way great way to encapsulate it in a, in a way that probably makes more sense to me than a lot of what I've heard before. Uh, and I, it, the, the idea of adjusting your frequency has been around for so long. I mean, the idea just of meditation, that is you literally taking your physical body and adjusting your frequency right there. That's all, med even prayer, if you believe in prayer. That is you adjusting your frequency to get in tune with who you're praying to. It, it, so adjusting your frequency has been around forever. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Just, I, I think it's absolutely fascinating what you're saying. Um, I guess what I'm saying is is there's it, it's a two-sided point. Right. It, it, you have the spiritual side of it that's always around us, as well as the mankind side of it is, is some of the things that we see that is deemed paranormal also something that we ourselves caused as well as the spiritual side of it so as you're flipping the coin as to what what is this i'm looking at is it something on the spiritual level or is it something like somebody walking down the street and having a time slip is that time slip part of it is that part of something that could have been something like my idea of that a a fracture in right that time something slips through like portals, people walking through portals and finding themselves somewhere else. Is that portal actually that crack that may have been caused by something mankind did by messing with these things they shouldn't be messing with? Well, you bring up a good point because I know a lot of people have 
have been very concerned with the 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 particle particle colliders and stuff, and yes. the ramifications to the multiverse, and you know what yes. could happen whether it's black holes forming in our you know in our Earth, or you know maybe it has universal ramifications. We just don't know, but you know oh, yeah. it, it's that old adage: science, rather than asking if they should do something, they just see if they can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To me, it's it's the whole thing of what you had said, not whether or not, or not we can, but if we should. It, it, it's the further step of at what point do we stop ourselves as well? Mm. Yeah. At what point do we, for example, the that's what, the the science fiction of the past. At some some of it very much is the science fact we have today. Yeah, I, was, I think that's perfect example. I mean, if you watch old Star Trek and the technology exactly. they had, and and now, I mean, we're all walking around with these supercomputers in our pocket, these phones, you know. And for for me, I just thought since I had mentioned it in passing, I wanted to come back and bring that up in case there's any listeners out there that may have another idea that might help further this, or like I said, bring, let's start bringing these puzzle pieces together and working as a group is a thing to, I mean, if anybody is there, if I share my email. Okay. So, uh, I would also like to share what I'm currently working on. If that's okay. I'm currently, uh, I shared with you a little bit. I've been, uh, investigating, uh, store my cousin owns and runs, uh, it's, uh, Recently, uh, before they bought it, they had, it had a fire, and I guess it used to be in the back in the good old days. It was a bar and had some rough people in it, and uh, we've been investigating. My son and I, late at night, uh, use some of the basic. Uh, I use a uh, spirit talker on my phone, which is I've uh, seen a few people on some of their in, uh, YouTube channels. I use that, and we have found one room in this place that's very negative. Ooh. Yeah, we we will go around through the building. Uh, some of the interesting things uh, I did not know about the building when I came in is it kept talking about words like secret room, behind the walls, and stuff like that. And uh, my cousin was like, yeah, go check up the upstairs. I'd never been up there at the time. Went up there, and sure enough, there's a secret room behind one of the walls. <laughs> no. Wow. Apparently, one of the stories was the, the, the kids that had lived here before used it as a playroom and stuff like that. So we're like, oh, so there's... Back to the thing about with children's spirits and not. Mm -hmm. I meant it, it, that one of, we were getting one of the child spirits wanting to play with one of my son's toys that he had sitting around. <laughs> and so we, we set it up. We were watching it. It didn't move or anything, but they were very happy about it. We were going through. And there's this one room right in the very center of the building. Every time we go in there, we start getting words like the witches here, elusive, evil. Ooh. I know. I, we're talking negative. And I sat nice. here the other Literally, I was provoking a little bit, <laughs> saying, you know, well, if you're going to do something, do something now. Nothing really happened um, until I came back to one of the positive rooms, and then it literally called me out by name. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, I'm talking, my name popped up right on the thing, asking me to stay here, and it, I'm like, nope, okay, that's enough for me. <laughs> wow. And, so, for me, I believe we have family that watches out for us mm -hmm. as well. Um, and this is a, the, the name it called me out by was a very specific nickname that only family know me by. It was like, so I know it has to be family to me. And back to what I was talking about, about the energies, is I believe um, we are constantly surrounded by the energies of this family. I would agree with that. In fact, I think uh, there are many cultures around the world that, that very much include their, their ancestors as part of their religious observation, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. That's, 
it, along with my studies, like I mentioned I, I've studied uh, the religious side of things, and I, it started out just specifically, like I, I mentioned, I was grown up, I grew up Baptist, but I grew up studying all the other religions as well. And I mentioned before how we there, we have more in common than we do differences. If, if you sit, take the time to sit down and study each of them out, sure. and a lot of the spiritual side of it has to do with love and family and the spirits that are always around us be there to watch out for us. Yeah. And of course there's always the negative. And that, when it comes to energy, even in the science realm, energy has either a positive or negative charge. And this goes into one of my other theories it has to do with you your yourself, you know, inside you. You if you surround yourself with the positive, you're going to give off a positive vibe. Sound yourself with negative, you're going to give off negative vibe. And those certain vibes will attract or reject, you know, those right type of things into your life as well. And it all, again, it all, it all ties in. It all ties in. Yeah. You know, I, I if you don't mind, I'd like to mention to you uh, an experience that I had, because I have that Spirit Talker app as well. And, and, um, actually after I downloaded it, I, I, I do live streams on YouTube as well on Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. And I was testing it just on online during, uh, during a live stream and actually a few live streams. Now, one time when I had initially installed it, it spat out some words that I thought were kind of didn't, didn't seem really to correlate with anything. And then another time it just started going bizarre. Like it was saying partial words, letters, numbers, just just a mess. And I was like, oh, maybe it's a glitchy app. So I kind of disregarded that. And then a couple uh, a couple other times it, it seemed to work okay. Sometimes it seemed relevant. Other times maybe not as much, at least from my perspective. But one time on, on one of the shows, this app, which I, I'm, I'm meaning to reach out to the developer of it because it spat out nothing but old Latin. Oh, wow. And I, I got it. I, I mean, it's part of a video that's out on YouTube, but I was just like, I had, I had my, my audience Googling this stuff. Cause I was like, what does this mean? What is this? What is this? And, and some of the, some of the stuff, it was old Latin and it was, I, I couldn't even barely pronounce it. Obviously I have enough trouble with just English. So you imagine me in Latin, but, uh, it was actually spitting out old Latin. And I was like, my God, would they have included that in their database? And I, for the life of me, I can't imagine that they would. But I haven't verified with the developer yet. Uh, that's part of my uh, plan going forward. <laughs> but with, if you have a set on English, you'll only get English words out. Yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, and it is everything. It, and since then, it's never done that again. Uh, through many investigations and stuff that I've done, both on the show and out at out at locations. So, really bizarre. I have noticed with these machines sometimes if you if there's you'll you'll just get random words when nothing's really around and right. stuff like that because the machine's just trying to pick something up. But when there's something there, you'll know it's there. I I'll, I'll give you another story. Uh, we had an actual uh, is an SB seven or an SB eleven? What an actual one of the actual spirit boxes. Sure. And uh, my sister, this was several years ago. My uh, my younger sister had just passed away. And we had used this box all the time at one of my old houses because I know one of my uncles hangs around to watch over us. And we, and uh, so my mother allowed me to use it at her house because my sister, like I said, had just passed. And mind you, I had, this machine always worked. Nothing wrong with it. I had fresh batteries in it. I turned it on. We're at my mother's house. It's, you know, late night. Mm -hmm. And literally nothing came across this machine I had never heard one of these machines go silent. So, like, I'm talking not even the usual static that, sh 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 oh, that really? usually comes across it. This was giving me nothing. Wow. And I never heard that before. So I literally went to my mother. I said, yeah, she is not here. You have nobody here. It, it, this place is very clean. There's nothing here. Because <laughs> I have never heard that before. And I assumed that's what it means. There's nothing here. Right. That's, 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 the first time, that's the first and only time I ever heard one of those machines go so... And I'm not talking just for a few minutes. I'm talking we sat there for 20 minutes listening on this thing, and it got was it was nothing. 
I checked the batteries. I checked the machine. We walked outside the building. It started doing it just fine. Well, then, yeah. <laughs> so were you, were you thinking it was a void or do you think perhaps there was something there not letting anything communicate? I'm not sure if it was a void. I'm not sure if there was something blocking. I I like I personally would like to think it's because there was nobody there. Because the literally the night of my sister's funeral, I had a picture up on the wall, and we're talking. It's like cold weather out yeah. when we had the funeral, and out of nowhere, there's this monarch butterfly flying around my living room. Now I'm up here in Michigan, so it's cold. You know, there's no more. Oh, wow. My uh, my younger sister was mentally handicapped, and she really loved butterflies. So this was, uh, to me, it was a beautiful thing, because it literally fluttered around the room, landed on her picture. And I have plenty of witnesses to tell you I'm not lying about this. And it landed on her picture. And my wife and I are sitting there watching, and we're, you know, yelling for the kids, come here, check this out. We both get up, leave the room, yelling at them to come check this out. Come back in, there's no butterfly to be found anywhere in the house. What a beautiful sign, though. And see, and even though, like, earlier, in the show, I was talking about how these, you know, possible scientific explanations, but even still, there's things like this that you can't explain. And oh. that's where I'd like to think it's one of those higher energy things affecting our third dimensional area where it's saying, hey, I'm still here. Here I am. I love stories like that, too, because I, I you know, and I, I wish... I wish it was possible that everybody that was grieving would be given a sign so powerful like that because I'm I'm sure that it was it was such a uh, I don't know a, a beautiful moment rather than just being a tragedy of losing a loved one you were given a, an amazing sign that hey everything's fine you know and it it's it's really neat because everyone in my family knows how I believe sure and, and come to me if they want some kind of explanation of things and stuff like that. And it's, it's I, I try not to be the type that forces it on somebody. Oh, you know, I, I just try to share things. And I, I mean, I grew up being in a religion that is, was like, our way is the only right way. And, and you know, I, I even, even spending all the years I did in that, it still hurt my heart to have that attitude with it. And I, I even grew up, I, I tried not to come out about having that, even when I talked to other people about, even if they believe differently, I, I would sit here and take the time to learn what it is they believed first, and then we'd have a discussion. Right. And talk. And I learned there's more in common than differences if you just take the time yeah. to talk to somebody, get to know them, learn about what it is they believe, rather than, you know, just stand firm on only what you think, you know, stuff like that. And I think it's the same in the paranormal. If we just start sharing, like, again, back to that puzzle pieces thing, we just start sharing what we know. And yeah. it, the scary part is, how much does the government know? <laughs> that's what, that's the part that scares me. And why won't they share what they know with us? Well, you you know, I, I would like to point out that there are some, uh, apparently, from Freedom of Information uh, requests, some pretty impressive documents that came from the CIA and their, and their journey into checking out this, maybe not so much paranormal, but into the spirituality and stuff and, and, you know, trying to, trying to, I don't know, categorize and, and break down the phenomena that was going on there. And, and it's surprising some of the things they looked into and, and I mean, that part other, of the, some of the stuff I was studying too. I was, yeah. Stuff was opened up that went right into my little pin boards with all the lines. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, other than the fact that they're written they're written like, you know, engineer schematics, which is really hard to read. But once you look into what they were checking out and some of the, you know, tests they were doing against it, and it's surprising the things that, you know, these these organizations dove into in order to, you know, I don't know, glean an edge or whatever. Uh, you know, it's it's pretty incredible. But I don't think the, that the government is, you know, all of it is formed around, you know, disbelief, I think you're right. I think it's, they're just trying to be first to see what they can gain from it, you know? Yeah, pretty wild stuff. One point that I'd like to revisit with you is when you were talking about the time and, and you know, how, and how there are maybe openings or cracks, as you, as you called them. And uh, 
I, you know, I, I throughout the course of doing this show, I, I read literally thousands and thousands of people's experiences. Um, and one phenomena that happens, I think is really, really probably dials right into where you're going with some of this, because there are examples of people seeing ghosts mm-hmm. and, and being startled and afraid. And then also examples of those same ghosts seeing the people as if they're the scary thing, exactly. you know? So, so it's like this, this cross observation, like a, like this moment in time that both are perceiving at least partially, but having a very visceral reaction to it. Like, Oh my God, there's a ghost. And the ghost is going, Oh my God, there's a ghost. <laughs> no, it's and, not- and that, would tie, that would perfectly tie in. Yes. If, like I said, if the, my idea of the theory of possibly somebody's messing around with the space time and it, they tried to bend it and that crack is there and two sides are seeing across that crack into each other point in time. Right. Of course, scare the dickens out of each of them. Yes, absolutely. And and I think that 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 perhaps happens a lot. I, I remember reading stories years ago of people being on ancient battlefields and just suddenly those ancient armies are are you know, marching past them in, in very 3D reality. There's a, there's a great experience, and I can't remember the two ladies, and it was back, I think, in the early 1900s when they went to Versailles and, it were, and uh, Marie Antoinette's court, and they turned a corner, and suddenly they were there and observing yes. Marie Antoinette and, and all of her you know, servants and stuff, and at least one or two of them looked and with shock seeing the people there so it's like these diaphragms are, are opening and closing because they just, you know, they got shocked and then turned. Um, th- those are incredible examples of perhaps that time anomalies that you're referring to. And how, I mean, how often we hear stories of like the residual at a specific time, yes. the same one keep playing over and over again, and like it's a broken record. And you hear the idea of something being broken, that brought my idea of, well, if, they broke, like they fractured just the surface of the space-time thing, that fracture could cause something like that to have to play over and over and over because it's stuck there as a crack. Mm-hmm. One other thing I'm, I'm curious about, and this is just kind of airing some of my own thoughts on it, um, rather than it being an external event, what about the possibility that being able to perceive these things isn't due to some outside damage or, or alteration to the space-time continuum, but perhaps it's in our awareness and, the, and getting back to frequency like we were talking about before. That, that, that's another thought I had because um, there's always that, uh, that idea out there of all of time is happening all at once. There's a lot of people who believe in that theory that time as we perceive it because we're three-dimensional at this point uh we see things set as this second then this second and this second but all of time is all happening all at once Mm -hmm. oh i don't know how the theory goes because i didn't spend too much time on that but i think it's called it's all happened it's all happening and it's all done all at once yeah. So while we're here doing this, all that stuff back there is happening for them at that point, and somehow the they can still meld together, and we can still see each other, and these things can happen. Yeah, yeah. I think but again, to what's causing the freak, like you said, frequency. Yeah, if we're at a different frequency in time, yeah. and people can change those frequencies, they could see it. Yes, it, that's that's another good idea. With it. yeah, I think I think that theory, and I'm probably going to brutalize this. My apologies to anyone out there listening. Who knows more than me, which is probably most of you, but I think that's called like non-Euclidean space-time is my, my, yeah. yeah, this, this idea that all time exists in this one now from the birth of the, of all of the cosmos to the eventual collapse and everything and, in between. It's just in this now and it's perhaps awareness that brings us through the moments. Part, the interesting part though, that also fits with the dimension thing, because like I was saying, if the fourth dimension is that part that contains the space time, once you get to the fifth dimension, that again is outside of that fourth dimension where the energy is, that's outside of space time itself. And that little portion of space time is all, you know, in a different portion of it. Therefore, the energy can somehow influence 
Yeah, because I imagine as as your scenario that you gave about one dimensional space, you know, stacked makes two dimensions, two dimensions stacked makes three, and then four and five. So every every but perhaps every you know uh, dimension is incumbent and reliant upon the dimensions below it. So if there's an adjustment or some incongruity, that would probably affect the whole. So very very interesting stuff. It's a lot of food for thought. Thought will. Uh, you're you're really cooking my bacon here today. <laughs> and and again, I wanted to come back and share my theories and hopefully some of your experts that you had before will hear this. And uh I'd like to share my email if they want to get hold of me. Yeah. That's okay. Please do. Uh will the wayfinder at gmail dot com. Uh that's the email I use for these things. Um yeah, email me if you have any thoughts. Of, let me know what you think. If any of you guys out there are listening, you want to add to it, give me your thoughts. You know, again, just let's start bringing this puzzle together so we can make more sense of this world, this wonderful paranormal world we live in. It's not a normal world out there. It's a paranormal world. <laughs> I'm not sure. It's all paranormal, Will, but I want to thank you for coming on again. And it's been a been a very intriguing ride this, this time. And uh I appreciate also the the investigation stories. That's that's incredibly interesting. So uh, just be careful out there when you're digging into the stuff, as I know you are. But um, I, I love going out investigating too, but I, I don't get out and do it as much uh, just due to time and ability. But, uh, I, I, you know, again, if, if more comes up, let me know. We can always get you back. Get out! <laughs> guys thank you so much for joining us here on tonight's show i hope you guys enjoyed it please feel free to follow us on facebook facebook.com slash paranormal portal radio as well as finding us on twitter we're on twitter at paranormal portal p-o-r-t-l and uh, we'd love to have you stop by our youtube page and subscribe and check out our shows there we got hundreds of shows journeys into the paranormal portal so I hope you'll check it out check it out guys we're over there at youtube.com slash paranormal portal so Hope to see you guys soon. Uh, We'll be back, of course, for more podcasts in the coming days. So we love you all. Be good, be kind, be nice. Take care of each other. Help each other out. Find the magic in every day. And remember to laugh as much as you can.